All right, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this Thursday, November 9th, 2023. It's about 12.33 p.m. Friday, right around the corner again. Uh, latest activity, a 2.3 earthquake into uh, the big island of Hawaii. Going to start off first with a uh, little bit of activity stirring up here on the sun. We did have a very minor CME that was earth-directed. You can see it here in this chronograph. Watch this little blast right there. Little full halo CME earth directed. Now looking at the component of that CME, you'll see it blast off here. Earth is going to be in the green circle here. Uh, so it looks like we will be getting uh, a glancing blow. Uh, well, maybe a dead hit, I would say. Uh, but it's not going to be a strong one here in the next two to three days. Uh, we should see... The auroras peak a little bit. Uh, look at this other model up here, plasma density. Velocity is pretty good. Uh, the density, though, looks like it's just going to miss us, uh, mainly up to uh, the, up on the top side of the screen. But either way, uh, we'll watch for that uh, in the coming days here. Let me bring up the latest information here from the space weather site, solarham.net. Uh, we'll watch for the adjustment on the three-day geomagnetic forecast uh, probably around the 11th or 12th time period. So it takes about 48, 72 hours or so for that to uh, reach the Earth. And uh, we'll see if these uh, kick up into the G1 class uh, category or not. Uh, and again, that was from a uh, one of these sunspots here. I believe it was 3483, about the only one that we've been watching uh, all these other regional sunspots have diminished, as I had mentioned last night. And uh, again, that uh, that weak CME was produced off of this area center disk. And looking at these uh, magnetic structures here uh, shows about the about the same as last night. The only one noteworthy to watch is going to be this area right here, and even so, it doesn't have a strong potential for uh, large flaring. Right now, only an 80% chance for a C flare, M flare at 15% chance, and the X flare lowered to about 1% chance or so. And this has just been an overall trend here, folks. I'm kind of wondering if we didn't peak out uh, solar maximum already here uh, last month or so, because um, it's been awfully quiet here in terms of the solar flare activity recently. A little odd. All right, uh, earthquake activity here overnight. We'll pull up the latest information here from USGS. Uh, Iceland's been having quite the earthquake activity up here again. Uh, getting a lot of earthquake movement uh, away from the Rick Janes Peninsula. Now, they did have a little article put out here today. It was updated today. Uh, earthquake of M4.8 measured last night. Uh, these folks are mentioning here the size of earthquakes does not necessarily mean an increased rate of magma accumulation. Uh, looks like about 1,400 earthquakes have occurred in this area of Iceland in the last 24 hours, here's the latest uh, INSAR image. Shows a vertical displacement here, a uh, bulge basically, around this volcano. That is where the magma is accumulating. And we're starting to see earthquake activity um, away from this area, indicating that uh, the magma underneath this region is stressing areas of the crust here around Iceland, but it's confined here to this area. Um, you know, I, I know they put this on here that the size of the earthquake does not necessarily mean anything in terms of magma accumulation, but I think it does. If we're seeing broader earthquake activity out here and more swelling, obviously, uh, the earthquakes in question here are a good indicator of what's going on below the surface, and that means more magma accumulation. Um... While the accumulation of magma continues, seismic activity can be expected on the Rick Janes Peninsula because the magma intrusion causes increased tension in the area. I just had just explained that. Uh, uplift continues in the area. The GPS data is being reviewed in relation to the seismic activity. Um, so it's just a matter of time, I think, before we see this thing really blast off in terms of volcanic activity. Here's the last couple of earthquakes here on the globe by the EMSC. Again, these guys mentioning 1,400 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. Goodness, so that's quite a bit. We'll continue to watch that and see how uh, things progress there across that area. Here's the latest uh, 
uh, plot created on November 9th. So it looks like we're still uh, still seeing that vertical displacement here. This is the up and MM. Uh, still getting uh, upwards displacement along with a little bit of east momentum here indicating uh, magma influx within this area of the uh, here's the station I'll show you guys it's right here across the area I know this is a little small map but this area of interest is right around here and that's where that uh, GPS station is there's a couple other GPS stations uh, around the area but uh, all right let's go ahead and move on we'll just kind of watch that no major change at least from what I can see uh, across the area in terms of uh, breaking through the uh, surface region and double check the Iceland volcano site here as well uh, see if we can get that to key up uh, maybe maybe not all right we'll just continue on here uh, with the earthquake activity big island of Hawaii some slight movement here uh, in the last 24 hours not seeing any noticeable increasing in earthquake activity out here across Kilauea volcano that site cannot be reached I'm not for sure why not secure I think my my browser here has a little issue with these not secure sites I'm not for sure what's going on but um, let's go over here to the uh, HVO site Kilauea daily update this was put out today it looks like the volcano on the big island of Hawaii uh, is not erupting um, No unusual activity been a no, uh, has been noted across the East Rift Zone. However, a small cluster of earthquakes is being monitored on Kilauea's Southwest Rift Zone. Interesting. So I uh, got a little bit of uh, further earthquake activity away from the crater region. That's uh, interesting. I know we're, we're definitely accumulating magma below the surface. That's for sure. The uh, question is, where is it going to go? Uh, is it just going to sit down there for a little bit or is it going to find its way to the surface area somewhere here's seismograph stations over the last 12 hours shows some minimal movement here a couple smaller earthquakes and uh, looks like maybe one also in the last hour or so uh, tilt meter across this region of Kilauea volcano well we're still on the uptick here and uh, it hasn't stopped in the past two days we're look at that this is almost unprecedented from the other uh, graphs that we had witnessed and seen the inflation levels increase over the last 30 days. So this is just going up. I think something big is about ready to brew out, out there or in the mix of brewing. We'll continue to watch that and see how this plays out, folks. All right, uh, further along here, let's take a look at California real quick, see if we got anything major overnight. I don't think we have. Uh, look at the 2.5 map and above. Only shows this one earthquake, uh, 2.8 near Bridgeport. Up in the Sierra Nevada Mountains there earlier this morning, uh, about 8 kilometers deep or so. Looks like there was a 2.6 in that mix as well. But aside from that, generally small microquake activity out here today uh, into the region of Yellowstone. Looks like we had one little earthquake. Uh, let's double check that and see what we got not a whole lot going on here i can tell already uh, at least looking at these graphs a couple smaller spikes here around the maple creek area but that's about it in texas areas down south here still seeing some earthquake movement although these two cluster areas are starting to fill in notice that last night we had uh well we had uh two distinct areas of swarming um but man this whole area looks like it's filling in nicely here uh, with earthquake activity of course that 5.2 coming in yesterday there in texas the fourth largest earthquake in uh, texas history so we got 252 earthquakes here in the last week here in this area of texas around these oil fields and uh, they're starting to fill in they're getting that pattern out here all over the land uh, one of these articles here we're mentioning that uh, this area um, is capable uh, well at least there's some faults out here there are certainly faults large enough to produce a seven pointer um, 
looks like in Oklahoma area, but they mentioned here about Texas as well, showing signs of, uh, you know, elevated movement since the uh, oil boom began out here. But I think we all know that. I think we, we know that that's the, uh, uh, a lot of the source. There is some faults that do run out here, uh, but I think we should be on guard for maybe some further movement here, it looks like, because that's starting to stretch out over a good area. Not confined to any one spot anymore. It's stretching uh, good, looks like 20 miles or so. Here's 10, me uh, 10 miles, maybe a little bit uh, longer than 20 miles span out there. So just a matter of time before we see some further large-scale movement out there in, in the uh, Texas and Oklahoma area. South America region did see a 5.1. Uh, here in Peru, 114 kilometers deep into the uh, Peru Chile Trench up here, a little section to the north of all this uh, previous activity. The Atlantic Ocean, aside from Iceland, there looks pretty quiet. Um, minimal movement across the Mediterranean and the Middle East. Um, let's see what we got. Some slight advancement going on here across the northern Sumatra area and up towards the Myanmar region. Uh, but that's about it. No large-scale movement taking place here yet. Uh, of course, we did see that uh, 7.1, a 6.9, and a 6.7 out here around the Banda Sea region in the last couple days. There's some of those earthquakes coming in there. Uh, a lot of movement kicking up. I would expect that to possibly um, kick up here and migrate across this region in terms of the momentum of stress. Uh, down here across the uh, Samoa and the Vanuatu area. Looks like one earthquake, 5.1 Vanuatu, 130 kilometers deep here into this area. North of Port Villa, further down south, not a whole lot going on across New Zealand it looks like. Uh, although it looks like maybe a couple threes out there scattered up and down that plate boundary. Let's give a quick glance here and then we'll get going. Uh, let's go to GeoNet servers real quick. 3.4, that's two days ago. Um, 2.6, 20 minutes ago. 4.7, way up along the Kermadec Trench. There's a three-pointer just off the North Island coast. Here about an hour or so ago. Uh, so minimal movement. There is some movement, but it's minimal at best, I would say. Uh, look at the earthquake drums here across the area of North and South Island, New Zealand show uh well some of those smaller quakes but nothing of interest here not a whole lot of uh major movement going on across new zealand for now all right the rest of the map alaska minimal movement up here not a whole lot of activity stirring up one earthquake outside of denali a 3.6 and uh, still seeing some microquake activity here across mount st helens and mount rainier but uh, nothing of interest today, anyway. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Um, I was looking at this weather model, and I don't like the way it looks. Remember last night I was showing you guys how the West Coast out here is going to get uh, pretty hammered with a uh, uh, potent winter storm and precipitation amounts supposed to be quite high. Well, the latest model run here, let me show you guys, looks like it wants to stay offshore. Notice that we we're supposed to get quite a bit of rain beginning Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, the latest model run shows that holding off the coast and not even materializing. I do not like that one bit, but it just goes to show you um, how these things can change. I'm hoping this is wrong uh, because these rainfall rates have really dropped off out here now as we go through next week. Um, Let's see where we're at. Yeah, we're supposed to get it right about Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week, and that's it. Look at that. Leaving California dry. Um, and mo most of the moisture, they're off now into the Pacific. Not liking that one bit. I'm hoping that will change. Because that just put a damper on my excitement for the rain coming in. So hopefully things get back to how they were in the original forecast. Have a good one, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later tonight. Got a, somewhat of a busy day here. Got quite a few things going on for school. And we'll catch you guys back here later tonight. Take care.